This video will look at using Axios with React, and if you'd like to get a text version of this, you can check it out over at alligator.io. The title of the article is Using Axios with React. So first off, I guess we need to define what Axios is. It's a promise-based HTTP request library, which allows us to interface with REST APIs. Another great thing about Axios is that we can cancel requests and intercept requests. And this is something we've seen before on the channel with HTTP interceptors, a similar thing uh, with Angular. But in my opinion, I suppose the best thing about Axios is the easy to use API. So let's dive in and add Axios to our React projects. The first thing that we'd need to do is run npm install Axios. And this will install Axios to our project and add it to our package.json in the later versions of npm. Once we've done that, we can head over to our React project and we can make a new folder called components. If you haven't made a React project yet, I'd definitely check out the create React app repository. The component that we'll be making is a person list. This will simply be a list of people. So we'll start off by exporting a default class named person list, and that will extend from react.component. In order to extend from that, we'll need to import react from react, and then we can define some state. The state will simply have a list of persons, and that will be an array like so. And inside the component did mount lifecycle, we can run axios.get. Now axios.get will simply perform a HTTP get request on a particular URL. But in order to do that, we need to import Axios from Axios. The URL that we'll be getting is simply the JSON placeholder API. So you may have seen this one before. If you haven't, I would check out the JSON placeholder.typecode.com URL. And as Axios is promise based, we want to use a dot then call, take the result or the response, and I'm going to set the state using set state equal to the persons. And that will map to the response.data. So you'll notice that if we do log the Axios response, you'll see that we get a variety of different pieces of information back, everything from the status code to the headers to the data and much more. But by simply setting the state, we'll then have access to this inside of our render method. So let's make a render method and we'll return simply an unordered list that contains the state of persons mapped to each individual person, which then each individual person is displayed in a list item by their person.name. So what we can do now is head over to our app.js and inside of app.js, we'll import the person list from our components folder slash person list. We can keep the welcome to react header, but underneath the header inside the div, I want to then add the person list component. Now, if we look at our application, we can see that we do have all of the people. So the 10 people appeared on screen using the Axios get request. If we look inside of our console, we can see that we have a warning at this point, and that's because we need to give a unique key for each item. So just for the sake of the tutorial, let's quickly do that. And inside of the list item here, we can assign the key to the person.id. So we've managed to now use HTTP get request. How do we do the other things such as post and delete? Well, let's make a new person input.js. And inside of this, I'm simply going to copy the person list. And we'll call this one person input. This time the state will be the person's name and that will not be an array, it will be a string. And we don't need this lifecycle hook at this point. Instead, what we want to do is handle the submission of a form. So let's make a handle submit, and that will take in the event. And to start with, we want to prevent the default action, and we can then make a new user, and that will be based on the state.name. So that's the state that we've selected throughout our text box, which we'll create soon. And then we want an axios.post. So very similar to the get, we now have a post. And as you can see here, it expects a URL and a potential optional data and config. So let's pass in the URL once again. 
And the next thing we want to pass in is the user. And the user is, of course, the payload that we're passing across to this API. So this would be, in your circumstance, any payload that you're passing to your database or anything like that, that you want to be handled on the server side. And as always, we can expect to have a response back from Axios. So let's have a dot then call in which we'll take the response and just simply log out the response itself. And then we can log out the data that we might get back from the response. We're nearly there. What we need to do now is change our render method so that we, instead of rendering a list, we render a form. Let's set the label. And the label will simply say person name. Inside the label, we'll have an input with the type of text, the name of name. And we need a way to track changes on this input. So what we need to do is make a handle change function. So let's make a handle change function that takes in the event from the input text box. And we want to set the state, i.e. the selected name, equal to the event.target.value. So that will simply be the value of anything we type inside of the text box gets added to the state parameter here. And then when we submit the text box, i.e. when we click the add button in a minute. So firstly, we're stopping the browser from reloading the page. We're making a new object. And then we're using Axios to post this to our API and passing along the object as a payload. Let's make an onSubmit that uses this .handle submit. And for our input, we want to use the onChange, which will be responsible for handling the change. Finally, let's add a button with the type of submit. And that button will simply say add. Let's take it over to app.js and inside of here we can import the person input from the components slash person input. Let's add that above the list like so. Here we now have a text box and we can add this to our API. So let's add the person called Roger and hit add. If we look inside of our console, you'll see that we've added a new user named Roger. And this of course proves because we have the ID of 11 that we've added an item to the API using a post request. Now, when it comes to making a put request, it's very similar. We just use the axios.put. And what I want to show instead now though is the delete. So what I want to do now is look at how we can delete an item from our API. Let's use axios.delete. And inside of here, we want to pass the users slash this dot state dot ID because we're going to be passing the ID across to our API. So this means we need to change our state. Let's change the state to have an ID. We'll set that initially to just be zero so we can click the button and delete person zero. Let's change the person name to be person ID and the name of which will be ID. The input type could go to number. And instead of add, we want to delete. Let's also change this so it references the ID inside of handle change. And we can also remove the payload, i.e. the new user. So all we're doing now is saying axios.delete and we want to pass in the users slash whatever we want to delete. So let's delete ID one. And you'll see that obviously we get nothing back, but the status code here was status 200. So that's an example of how we'd use Axios inside of our React applications. It's quite similar to any other application. Similarly, the Axios API is the same and the rest of the application obviously changes to the library or framework that you're using. So thanks a lot for watching. Hit that subscribe button to stay updated with more content. And of course, check out paulhalliday.io for more courses and premium content. Oh, this new crazy mother...